other. We've all been there, vigorously attempting to replicate Kane Pixel's backrooms animations in high hopes that our videos might go viral. But there was one underlying issue. Our animation sucks, especially the camera movement. You see, camera movement is key when it comes to animating found footage, since the viewers who watch the final animation are constantly on the watch to identify unusual camera movements, which may result in the animation being rendered unrealistic. So in this video, I will guide you on how to animate believable found footage. So here we have a default blender scene open. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press A on the keyboard and delete the default cube, light and camera. Once I've done that, I'm going to select edit, preferences, go to the add-ons tab right here and type in Archimesh. You just want to click this little checkbox right here and you can close that. So once you've done that, you're going to press N on the keyboard, toggle down this arrow right here and you're going to select, I'm just going to expand this real quick. I'm going to select a room. So here we have a basic wall right here. I'm just going to create a simple corridor. So I might just do a length of around 10. That'll do perfectly for this video. Then what I'm going to do is just to give a corridor a little bit of detail to it. We're going to add a door and all you're going to do is you're simply just going to go up to the door group right here and you're just going to select it and you should be able to grab it. So you're going to go G, G, X, and I'm just going to select it there. I'm actually going to move it into the middle of our scene like that. You'll see that there is no Boolean that will remove the excess faces. To fix that, we're going to go back to our room and we're going to click auto holes and that removes the excess faces with a Boolean, which is really cool. Because you'll see if I just rotate this on the Z axis, it's pretty cool. Now I've done that, I'm just going to duplicate the room. Very simple like this. You might find there's one problem, there's no skirting board. So what you're going to do is you're just going to go to the baseboard and you're just going to increase the width to a relatively small value. So once you've done that, you're going to hit Shift A on the keyboard and you're going to add a plane just to act as a floor. Go to top view by hitting 7 on the number pad. If you don't have a keypad, sorry, you just select Z right here on this little gizmo here and it'll bring you to the top view. So I'm going to scale this by 10 by hitting S on the keyboard and typing in 10 like that. Now the first thing I'm going to actually do is I'm going to hit Shift A again. I'm going to select a rig. I'm going to select a human rig and I'm just going to place it here. RZ90 or minus 90 for in this case. This rig allows us to uh, determine the height of our camera. Sometimes if you animate found footage, the camera may be too low, which is quite unnatural or it could be too high. So go to side view and obviously you just want to hit wireframe here. And here is our human rig to act as a reference for the height of our camera. So you're going to hit shift A on the keyboard again. I'm going to select camera and you're just going to align it to where the hands are. So I'm going to align it maybe around here. Once I've done that, I'm going to go and hit zero on the number pad. So once I've done that, I'm going to split my view so that I have an in-camera view and a top view, preferably. Now, the reason why I want to use a top view is that it's easier to animate the camera. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit shift tilde tilde is actually just below the escape button if you don't know where that is. Just pivot the camera down like this and then I'm going to select I on the keyboard for the location, rotation and scale values and set a keyframe for that. And I'm just going to hit the tilde button, shift tilde again, move that like, um, just move that up a little bit there and then keyframe again. If you don't want to keep pressing I periodically, you can just select auto keyframes but I prefer not select that because sometimes I might accidentally move the camera by accident and then it'll create a keyframe which will just mess up um, the timeline, uh, the keyframe animations. But once you've done that, you're gonna go all the way to the end of the timeline and you're just gonna grab the camera, just move it around up, up to here, I guess. I'm gonna hit I on the keyboard to set a keyframe for those values. It obviously takes a while to get these little movements to look natural, obviously, but I'm not going to do that right now because it takes a lot of time. So if you are following this tutorial, just spend a little bit of time perfecting those pivotal movements. It will definitely make the end result look significantly more realistic and believable. I'm going to right click here above the timeline and I'm going to select horizontal split. And then is I'm going to go to the graph editor 
A to select that, V, and you want vector because we don't have a Bezier movement when we move a camera around. It's usually linear. So you want to select this, and now everything will be linear. Turn down this and go to the X Euler rotation. I think it's Euler. I swear it was. I think the Blender Guru said it was Euler during his donut tutorial or one of the episodes. So you're going to select the X Euler rotation and you're going to go to modifiers. You're going to add a noise. You'll see right now that it is quite vigorous. So we need to scale this down. So I'm going to scale this by 16. I'm actually just, first of all, I'm actually going to find the keyframes for this noise. And they're right here. And you can see that this is quite vigorous. What you're going to do is you're going to bring the strength down. Maybe 0.08 is a decent strength value, I think. If you've got an action-packed scene, maybe you could increase it to one or two. But it, it, it really depends on the type of scene that you have. If you didn't know the correct terms for these uh, parameters here, is that scale is wavelength and the strength is actually the amplitude. Of course, you can add your materials. I'm not going to do that because this isn't an actual scene that I'm working on. But you can see here that the camera animation looks relatively realistic compared to what we did have before we added the noise modifier. So that concludes the video. Let me know in the comments if this video has helped you out and I'll see you in the next video.